Good morning. Today we're looking at cross-chain messaging. We're going to be moving data between different blockchains. We're going to deploy a contract on Ethereum layer one. That's going to communicate with the layer zero protocol, which is in turn going to relay a message to Optimism layer two. Once we've got the basics down, we're going to look at some more useful use cases like deploying cross-chain tokens. My name is James Puccini and on this channel I create content about blockchain development and decentralized finance. If you haven't already, then subscribe to the channel and please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Okay, so let's jump in here. We're going to be using remix.ethereum.org. This is an online IDE and we want to go ahead and create a new workspace. So let's do that first. We want to create a blank workspace. We're just going to call this layer zero test. And we want to create a new file. We'll call this layer zero test.sol. .sol is the extension for Solidity. And I'm going to copy some code in from this GitHub repository. This is something I worked on earlier. So I'm just going to go to raw here. And I'm going to copy with control C and paste that into this file. So all we've done is copied the, the smart contract code into um, the remixed editor. And we've got one thing we've got here is the the Solidity version is the latest one, so we're going to have to need to, we're going to need to update that here if you haven't done it already. And then we're just going to check that compiles by clicking compile. You can always use, also use Control S for this. And we see we get this little green tick, so we've got no errors at the moment. Uh, let's go through the file first, and then we'll run it up and kind of see what it does. So we're importing a library from Open Zeppelin. We can go and get and have a look at this, but basically it's just a library for us to interact with. We're then creating a new contract. There's some comments here, which I just use for um, when, we, when we're deploying the contract. Um, I use these comments just to kind of know where the contract's been deployed to and the endpoints and the chain IDs here are unique to layer zero. The, the, this chain ID isn't this, that layer zero uses isn't the same chain ID that like we put into MetaMask. These contracts can be deployed. These are old ones, so we'll add them in once we re redeploy it um, soon. And we've also got this contract, layer zero is a non-blocking LZ app, which is this uh, library. We then got the string, which we're saving. So this contract is gonna be both the sender and the receiver. We're gonna do this with one contract, try and make it simple. And then we've got the destination chain ID, which is both of these are state variables. So this constructor argument only runs once um, during the first time that you deploy the contract. And it, we're passing in an LZ endpoint, which is this value here. So for Gorelli, we'll pass through this one. And it basically sets the destination chain ID to the opposite. So if this is equal to this, then the destination chain ID will be Optimism Gorelli. So the destination is different from the, uh, the, the blockchain that this is being deployed on. We then have a function for non-blocking receive. This is a kind of override function where we're overriding the library contract and we're going to kind of give it some information on what to do once it receives data. So here we're decoding the data with ABI decode. We've got a payload, which we're setting or we're telling the function is a string. And we're going to set that to this data. So this data will become whatever message we send it, basically. We then have a send function. So string, memory, message, we're passing in a, a string or a text, a piece of text. We're then going to compile that using ABI encode to a payload. And then we're passing that through using a library variable called uh, underscore LZ send. So we're given a destination chain ID, which is already set up here, the payload, which we've set um, with the ABI encode, and then we're setting a payable um, message.sender. Uh, this is actually for the refund. So you have to actually send some tokens or some ETH with this and any kind of leftover that they don't charge in fees gets sent back to you. Finally, before we have to do that, we kind of have to set trusted contracts on the opposite chain. So we're going to do trusted remote lookup and then destination chain ID, and we're going to pass in the contract. So we're basically passing in the, the opposite contract address. So to um, the destination address, we'll pass in the sender address and vice versa. To deploy this, we're going to need some Gorelli ETH. We can go into MetaMask and Gorelli Net Test Network. There's Gorelli Forsets. Um, available online to search Gorelli full set. There's one by Alchemy that's set up. And we're also going to need to add the Optimism Gorelli testnet. This is chain ID 420. So let's go ahead and connect that. And we're going to approve. And now if we go into the local test network, you can see we're on Optimism Gorelli. I'm going to switch that back to Gorelli for just one second. 
because we want to bridge some assets across. I've got some Gorelli ETH, but I don't have any Optimism Gorelli ETH because this is a separate L2 blockchain. So let's go to the Optimism Bridge. This is app.optimism.io forward slash bridge. And let's deposit one ETH. And we're going to send this to Optimism. Let's connect our wallet using MetaMask. That's all fine. Let's go ahead, standard speed, 20 minutes. It's gonna be a long video. So now it's saying that it's uh, still going through. You can see that in the wallet, that has actually gone through and got one ETH in our Optimism Gorelli testnet wallet, which is the same address. Okay, so now we can deploy these two contracts, or we can deploy the same contract to two different instances, one on each blockchain. So we're gonna compile it first, and then we're gonna go down and we'll select injected MetaMask, connect this wallet to Remix, and then we're gonna need, we are currently on Optimism Gorelli, so we're gonna want this LZ endpoint here. You can find these LZ endpoints and the chain IDs on Layer Zero's website. Let's put that in the constructor argument and deploy our first instance. Confirm a transaction fee, which is kind of the fee to deploy the contract. And that's gone through straight away. Now let's do the same for the Gorelli L1 testnet. And we're gonna copy this LZ endpoint and we're gonna deploy that just here. So the top endpoint here is on Optimism, and this one is the L1 on Gorelli. So let's copy the Optimism contract address, and then if we expand this one, we need to trust that address. So we need to do this for both of them. Let's confirm that transaction. And then to do it on the first one, we actually need to switch our network at the top. So go back to uh, Optimism. I'm not gonna lie, this does get a bit confusing. And let's trust this address, which is the opposite address on the opposite chain. Okay, so now we trust each address. We should be able to send message both from the L2 to L1 and the L1 to L2 both ways. So let's first try sending it from uh, Optimism to the L1. Uh, let's send Hello from Optimism. I'm also going to add a value here. So I don't know what the exact value you have to enter is, but I'm going to enter uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guai, and that's equivalent to like 0.01 ETH. The any remainders that's not used in the transfer will actually get refunded back to your wallet. So let's go ahead and send this. Confirm that transaction. Now, if we switch over to the other network, the Gorelli L1, we should see that that data has come through. Hello from Optimism L2. Because we deployed this both ways, we should be able to do the same thing going the other way. So we can put hello from Gorelli L1. And just need to check we've still got a value up here, which we don't. Let's go ahead and send that message. So that's basically how you can relay data between different chains. You can set up trusted contracts on a separate blockchain, and then you can use layer zero to relay information between the two. Now let's look at a more useful example where we're gonna set up some cross-chain tokens. So if we go back to the workspace, and I'm gonna close all this up. I wanna create a new file, we'll call it cross-chain token. And again, I'm gonna copy and paste this from the GitHub repository. Move these contract addresses. And what we've got here is we're importing the same non-blocking LZ app from layer zero's library. 
And then we're going to also import Open Zeppelin's ERC20 token. So this cross-chain token contract is actually an ERC20. It's a standard fungible token. The rest of it looks very similar to the last contract because we, but all we're doing really is kind of sending uh, data messages to authorize uh, the minting of the token. So we're going to start by minting in the constructor, the owner of this contract, with uh, 1 million tokens. Then when we receive a cross-chain message, we can actually going to mint some more. So when we receive a message with an amount and a to address for from a trusted contract, which is the other token contract on the other network, then that allows us to mint tokens to the, the senders or address. Then we have a bridge function, which is the same as the send function in the last contract. And this allows a user to send a certain amount of the tokens in their wallet to the other chain. So we're gonna first burn that amount of tokens. So we're using the internal ERC20 burn function to destroy them on this chain. And then we're gonna uh, set up a payload with the user's address and the amount that they want to send. Then we're going to send this off to layer zero with that compiled payload, which will then be received by the same contract on the other chain, which will authorize the minting of their, those tokens to the address of the, the same user. Finally, we have the trust address, which just kind of sets up the trust for the different token contracts. We have to say that the ERC20 contract on this chain trusts the ERC20 contract on the other chain and vice versa, so they can communicate with each other. Let's go ahead and see how this works in practice again. Let's compile the contract with control S and then we're gonna get rid of these two tests and we're gonna deploy them again. Let's go ahead and set up optimism first. We have to paste in this endpoint. Then we'll switch the network over to the Ethereum Gorelli L1 testnet. And we're gonna do exactly the same, just with a different endpoint. This one here. Deploy that contract there. And then once that's, once that's gone through, we're gonna copy the Optimism contract address, go down and go to trust this address. Say, yep, we want to trust you. Go through, I think that went through. And then we're going to go to the other one, which is on optimism. And we're going to copy the opposite contract address and say, we trust you too. So now if we take the owner address, which is the address that we deployed the contracts with, and we come down to, we should have a read function for balance of this is an internal function. You can see we've got some tokens here. There's a load of decimals as well, but it's basically a million tokens in each wallet. So we should be able to transfer these to the other wallet address. So let's go to bridge and let's transfer in random amount. And we're going to have to set a fee as well, send some GUI to pay for the, this pays for the uh, layer zero transaction because they've got to actually take the data on one uh, chain and then kind of pay a transaction fee on the opposite chain. So let's send some funds with that. They'll get any left over will get refunded back to us. Click bridge. It's worth mentioning in production that you'd probably want to calculate these fees kind of dynamically. There is a way to do that within the smart contract. It's a little bit more technical, but there's docs on the uh, Layer Zero website about how to do that. That looks like it's gone through. So if we check our balance now on this, we should have slightly less. We have, look, so it's burnt some of our tokens on this chain. And if we switch the network across to Gorelli, and open that up that contract. Let's copy our owner address again, and then go down to balance of. And so far they haven't come through. So at the moment we've burned the tokens on one chain, but we're still waiting for them to come through on the other chain. So they're kind of resting in the ether somewhere. But within five minutes or so, if we keep checking this. Don't do it. And there we go, they come through. So we've got the original amount that we minted here, 
and then the ones that we sent at the extra here. So we effectively move some tokens from one chain to the other. If you want to have a play of this, the source code is on GitHub. I've also put together a more in-depth kind of blog post here, which will go through some of the details about how it works. We're seeing more and more decentralized applications deploying across multiple chains. I think the Layer Zero protocol offers a very simple to use library, which can be part of every blockchain developer's toolkit to send messages and data between chains and create these kind of multi-chain applications. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you want to learn more about blockchain development and decentralized finance, then subscribe to the channel and please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for watching.